the Full Metal Alchemist live action movie hits Japanese theaters December 1st, which may be in the past or future depending on when you're watching this video. However, I was fortunate enough to be one of about 2,000 people that got to see the US premiere of the new FMA movie at Anime NYC 2017. The only other premiere that had happened was at the Tokyo Film Festival earlier this year. And I gotta say, I actually really enjoyed the movie. With the string of live action failures in both the States and Japan, Full Metal Alchemist is actually able to stand a lot above the crowd. Was this equivalent exchange? After so many bad live action adaptations, was that the price we had to pay for a fairly good one? Today, I want to take some time to give a spoiler free review of the movie. And just to get some credentials out of the way, Full Metal Alchemist is my all time favorite anime franchise. It's my favorite manga. The 2003 series is probably somewhere in my top 10. And Brotherhood is my favorite anime if not show, of all time. So I, like many others I'm sure, really, really, really wanted this movie to be good. Did it live up to expectations? Let's talk about it. And this is just a reminder, but these are my opinions based on only one viewing of the movie, and it's completely all right to have different opinions. One of the biggest things people look for in an adaptation, whether it be an anime or live action movie, is how accurate it is to the source material. While many others have failed, FMA actually had a pretty good balance of respecting the source material while somewhat doing its own thing. Obviously it wouldn't be a one-to-one -one copy of the manga, since the movie only had so much time to work with. Heck, even the Brotherhood anime cut out a bunch of scenes from the manga, and some that didn't even make it in the original O3 adaptation either. I would say approximately the first half or two thirds of the movie followed the original manga story fairly well. They changed up a few things and combined a few events for timing's sake, but the way they did it was pretty well done in my opinion. The final third of the movie is where they kind of make some changes. They still pulled some of the things that happened from the source material but then added their own version for both timing's sake and to make it a more complete movie. One or two of the events, which I won't say here for spoilers sake, were actually taken from later in the manga than I initially thought that they would have gone. The director, who flew over from Japan for the US premiere, said he wanted to make this a standalone movie, but might be open to doing sequels in the future. And I would say the way that the movie leaves off is both a satisfying conclusion, but did also leave me wanting more in the future. Honestly, what was most important, to me at least, was that the characters felt like themselves. Change up the story if you want, but if you mess with the characters people have come to know and love over the years, that's really when fans get angry. Look at any of these past adaptations, Dragon Ball Evolution, Attack on Titan, Netflix's Death Note, all of those butchered the characters that people have come to know and love. This movie, both story and acting wise, I thought did a really good job at portraying these characters. Ed is still a cocky and skilled kid who cares a lot for his younger brother. Al is still a sweet boy trapped in armor who cares just as much for his older brother. Winry is still her headstrong and spirited self and actually got some extra scenes which is nice to see her more included in the movie. Colonel Mustang is shown to be very cold at first, but his soft spot for his subordinates ends up shining through in the end. Reza Hawkeye is still just as loyal, Maze Hughes is still just as lovable, and the homunculi are just as despicable as the original. It would be hard to pick a favorite actor because everyone was really well casted for the role. Hughes especially was exactly like his anime manga counterpart. However, I would say Yamada as Ed really stole the show. I didn't know much about him or Heisei Jump before the movie, but his performance was outstanding. He really captured Ed all around, both during the silly scenes and the emotional ones. Also, whenever Ed slept, he slept in all these weird positions, which just felt so much in character. His belly wasn't sticking out, unfortunately, but the wonky positions were a lot of fun. I know Yamada was initially hesitant about the role, 
because he was an FMA fan and he was hesitant about how well it would adapt to live action, but he really pulled off a phenomenal Edward Elric. Also, I know some people had an issue with the actors all being Japanese in FMA, since the story has parallels to a 1920s European setting, and the fact that the actors were Japanese was something I barely even noticed while I was watching the movie. All the actors really portrayed their characters well, and they just felt so much like the original characters. I became so engaged in the movie, I completely forgot that they were all Japanese actors. That was just me, but it didn't really bother me at all. However, having your second main character be an empty suit of armor made completely in CG was something Japan wouldn't have been able to do some years ago, both technology and budget-wise. Even with their smaller movie budget, they did a really good job at bringing Alphonse to life. All of his movements were believable, and his armor had all these scratches and small details on it that just really made him seem real. The effects in the movie were also a big step up for Japan. Having alchemy involved definitely required a bunch of effects work. I thought that they were all pretty solid. One or two moments might have stood out a bit, and off the top of my head, there was like one scene slash reveal that seemed a little over the top. But otherwise, I thought everything was pretty dynamic and looked good. The effects might not have been Hollywood level per se, but it's definitely a step in the right direction for Japan, which was a big emphasis of the movie for the director. However, because I'm sure most of the budget probably went into Alphonse, there were times he was kind of sidelined for more focus on Ed. Don't get me wrong, the core of the movie is still all about their brotherly bond, and there were some great moments between Ed and Al, Al and Winry, but I kind of wish we got a little more of Al in the movie. Um, one of the examples off the top of my head is there's a part where Ed and Winry travel somewhere while Al stays behind, but in the original, it's Ed and Al going to that location. Again, I don't want to spoil it. Um, Overall, Alphonse still had some absolutely great moments, but there were a few times where he was left out, probably to save on money, and the focus was just noticeably more on Ed. I understand why it had to be that way, and it doesn't ruin the movie at all, but it was just something I noticed. I will say that it did allow for some cute extra Edwin interactions, having Winry tag along. Also, don't worry, there were a few scenes that made it in for my OTP Roy as well. Thank goodness. The music was pretty good. Nothing I personally remember stood out per se, but I was more focused on trying to actually see the subtitles over people's heads. Where the screen was located during the showing, it was a little low and a little difficult to see sometimes if you were seated anywhere except the VIP section, especially if you're a short person like me. Do you call it little? <laughs> Also, I'm no expert on camera work either, but I thought the shots were pretty good. Also worth noting, there was no Havoc or Black Hayate or anyone else from Team Mustang other than Lieutenant Hawkeye. I didn't expect them to have much of a role with the amount of time and story the movie was trying to cover, but it could have been cool to see them somewhere in the background at least. Gracia is there, but is actually still pregnant, meaning no Alicia in the movie. Since we had Nina in the movie, they probably didn't feel the need to put two little girls in the movie is probably my thought. Also, there was no Armstrong, no Scar, no Sergeant Brosh, but we do get a little bit of Lieutenant Ross. Characters like Armstrong or Scar might be featured in a sequel if one gets made. Some other stuff I thought worth mentioning about the movie premiere. Despite some struggling to see the subtitles, it was a lot of fun watching the movie surrounded by so many FMA fans. There were a ton of cheers when the main cast made their first appearances on screen, a lot of laughs at some classic FMA jokes that made it in, and a lot of tears during the, the, um, the unspeakable scenes. God, I can't believe they put us through those a fourth time. The director of the movie, Fumihiko Sori, had flown from Japan for the premiere as well. He said a few words before and after the film, he talked about some stuff that had been covered in interviews already, but also mentioned that this was a project that he wanted to make for years, but he knew Japan didn't have the right technology for a project like that. During that time, he was really worried Hollywood would get to it first, so he was really happy when they didn't. He's also been a longtime fan of the manga, which I'm sure has really helped with keeping the movie mostly accurate. He was asked if there were any other manga properties he wanted to adapt, 
in which he answered that there were, but he couldn't say just yet. He also mentioned that he wanted this movie to be a single standalone film, but is open to making sequels in the future. Apparently the original manga writer, Arakawa Sensei, is one of the people that wants to see a sequel the most. Speaking of her, it was also said that she gave a lot of trust and creative freedom to Sori-san. She didn't even look anything over until it was on its final script, and then didn't make any changes. She was very excited to see what they could do with the movie, and slight spoiler here, but her favorite parts were the fight between Ed and Al and the battle between Mustang and Lust. Before the movie began, we also got a clip of Yamada and Arakawa with her signature cow icon blocking her face. They said some words to the audience about the movie. One of the coolest parts about attending the Full Metal Alchemist live action premiere was actually after the movie. Director Fumihiko Sori was really excited to hear what the American audience thought of the movie. So excited that he and a small crew actually brought a camera and a microphone to film us giving our thoughts on the movie. Since I was dressed up as Ed, I was ushered to the front of the line with the other FMA cosplayers that stuck around. Because I was ushered from the back of the line to the front so quickly, I really was not ready for what I was going to say just yet, uh, I, but I managed to somehow make out some words, and Sori-san was nodding his head from behind the camera in a lot of excitement, and he just seemed really thrilled to hear what we all had to say. He then took a picture with us, so I thought the entire experience was just really cool and worth mentioning. Overall, it's not a perfect movie, but it's one of the best animated live action movies I've seen. I would place this live action adaptation on the same level as the original Death Note movies. The 2006 ones from Japan, not Netflix's, just to be clear. But with better effects. The live action movie is nothing that surpasses the original manga or animes per se but it stayed true to the original spirit of the original manga. The characters felt like themselves, and the humor felt very in line with the manga, but just like the manga, it slowly got more serious as the movie went on. I see this movie as just another piece of the franchise that fans can watch and enjoy. After all, is more Full Metal Alchemist ever really such a bad thing? At the Tokyo Film Festival, this movie was confirmed for an international release in 190 countries, so I would recommend checking it out when it makes its way over to theaters in the future. If you want me to make a spoiler-filled video giving a more detailed rundown of the movie, comment down below. Are you planning on seeing this in theaters? Also feel free to comment down below. If you are feeling generous today, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more anime cartoon related videos. I've been on a big full metal kick lately, so I'm hoping to make some more FMA videos pretty soon, as time and work permits. Thank you as always for watching, and I hope you have a full metal fantastic day.